welcome to this week's uh, Monarch preview show. Uh, slightly different this week, uh, we're doing it mostly by audio this week. Um, a few family commitments from regular host Scott Frame uh, means that, that this is how we'll do it this week. So I'm joined on the line by Mike Hunter. How are you, Mike? Not too bad, thank you. Considering we just lost at home, I feel not too bad. <laughs> well, that's it. If we look at last Friday as a start, um, Obviously, it was a match I actually missed, and I was on a plane back from London, and it was quite possibly the worst news to land back on the tarmac at Edinburgh Airport too. But you know, sometimes results like that can have a galvanising effect. Do you think it's something that may actually help the Monarchs in the long run? Uh, you could possibly try and take that out of it. I think I think we uh, it was a close match until we started suffering some bad luck, and unfortunately, whereas we usually step up to the plate and give a really good performance towards the end it went completely the other way and it was Sheffield who really took over over the last few heats so we just have to accept that and move on and try and do better I think so I mean you can look at a few you know a few incidents that went against us mostly involving Sammy's engine failure and then obviously the the crash which leaves them out for the sort of foreseeable future but I think you have to take your hat off to Sheffield you know, they were there to take advantage and boy did they take advantage they certainly got several riders who at their best are very hard to beat and, and they all seem to be towards the end of that match pretty much at their best. And I suppose the the one thing that it does mean is this Friday's match and certainly this weekend's matches but certainly this Friday's match against Peterborough uh, takes on a lot more importance now. That little bit of leeway we had at home after the results maybe at Ipswich and at Newcastle is gone now so we need to get back to winning ways. Yeah I don't think we can afford to lose another one at home because we have to assume that the teams chasing us, especially the red car, will probably pick up something away from home and uh, we can't afford to drop any more home points. Yeah, and it's a, a different looking Panthers team that comes this time. The last time, um, I, I don't remember a visiting team having so much ill fortune as Peter had the last time they were there, losing both their number one and number five while all were already running rider replacement before the half, first half of the meeting was over um, as the Monarchs run at 60-30. But that's not going to be the case this Friday, looking at that Panthers lineup. I certainly don't think so. They are a little bit weakened, as we are. Um, I think the rider replacement will not cover for Bradley Wilson-Dean. And whether or you can say that uh, Justin Sedgman will be better or worse than Ulrich Ostergaard, well, it's kind of in the lap of the gods. They're, they're both capable of being good and not so good at uh, Armadale. But, but Sedgman is potentially, obviously, very good. And I think certainly at the top end... Um Obviously, we're missing Sam. We'll touch on that and a little bit more on his replacement in a bit. But you know, we, we've seen how good Chris Harris can be after a, I don't know how many years gap it was since the last time he was at Armadale last week. Jack Holder probably been the most improved rider in the league so far this year, and and Paul Stark, another consistent rider who's always good for points at Armadale. Yes, it's not greatly dissimilar to the visiting team last week with. Uh, possibly reserves that we might be able to take advantage of and uh, but a strong top part of the team so we do need to I think ride better throughout the meeting than we did last week. Yeah, and you mentioned there obviously that the Bradley Wilson Dean missing and rider replacement comes in for him which will put a lot of pressure on the Peterborough reserves uh, one of which is Simon Lambert who we spoke to earlier this afternoon. So we're now joined on the Monarch's preview show by Peterborough's Simon Lambert. Thanks very much for joining us Simon. No uh, so firstly, looking back to last weekend, um, obviously the, the fourth championship and a, a very successful championship for yourself and the team, um, that must have been some experience for you. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, I've ridden it a couple of times before, but um, obviously uh situation with Jack Holden and whatnot, having to get a Poland and whatnot, um, kind of blew it a bit wide open. Obviously Bradley was going to go in and I was on in reserve and that was all sort of sorted at 12 o'clock Saturday and then... 10 o'clock Saturday night, I got a text saying you're in tomorrow with Bradley there at risk. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously to go and, you know, and sort of win it was amazing. And uh, it's probably the best I've ridden all season, to be fair. I've not had the best of the years, but I'm only sort of 50% fit from my wrist. Um, but after sort of four weeks of breaking both of my on my wrist, um, the track was fantastic. It slick, you know, it was easy to ride, and uh, the bike was working good, and I felt good. and I had a good contribution towards it as well, and um, as a team we all worked together. And yeah, it's brilliant, and it was good to be paid as good with a bit of silver work. It's been a hell of a lot of work going on in the last sort of three or four years. And Ted and his sort of 
team we keep Peter Bespudo running, so it's the first sort of trophy as well. So um, yeah, fair play to them as well. And uh, as riders, we were all you know chipped a bit. And then obviously going into a busy weekend ahead, I believe it's almost a northern tour. It's three matches in three days. That must give the team a, a lift. Um, you know, going into the league campaign as well. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Friday, well, you know, it's a shame, but Friday we've got no Ulrich, I think. Um, Saturday we've got no Bomber. Um, Sunday I'm not sure about. Um, but we've got no Bradley all weekend, so we're running out of him. That puts a lot of pressure on myself, really, and uh, Tom at reserve, because I think there's only me and him, and Stark is the highest one above Bradley. So, you know, potentially not ideal for me, but it but it kind of is, if that makes sense. You know, if I'm going good, potentially I could get seven rides every meeting. Um, not saying I'll perhaps enjoy that fully around Edinburgh, because it's not one of my <laughs> favourite tracks, but, Edin, Edin, uh, but Berwick and Newcastle, you know, I, I don't dislike them. I like Berwick and Newcastle, OK, just because it makes a good start. Um, but again, I've proved I can score points at Edinburgh before. Like I say, it doesn't suit my height and my style, but they're all there to be ridden. Um, mathematically, we can still make the playoffs, but... You know, we need a big push and, you know, we've got Scunthorpe away to come, which we're pretty confident we can get a win there. And we've got Workington, which is a good track for us, um, away in these, this weekend and home matches. So if we can get sort of maybe two results away and pick a point up, say, at maybe your place or Newcastle, there's no reason why we can't sort of maybe make the playoffs, which would be fantastic. So um, we're not giving up yet, so we're coming all, all guns blazing and, uh, yeah, we're going to go for it. And you mentioned that there, obviously, it looks like it will be a very busy weekend for yourself with Bradley being out. You know, what kind of mindset do you take into that? Is it a case of, you know, go out, try and get the best result you can in Heat 2, and then obviously that will build your confidence into the rest of the night? Or do you just take every race as it comes? It's one of them, you know, speed rides are confidence thing. If you can have a good first ride, it kind of sounds silly, but it kind of sets you up, you know. To, at reserve, I like, you know, I expect myself to win Heat 2 everywhere I go, pretty much. Um, you know, once, when, you know, you get a win, you think, oh, great, you know, good start and good four laps. It's different, you know, it, it does give you a bit of a different mindset, maybe, but, you know, at the end of the day, every race is every race. Um, but I always say, it's not the right way to look at it, maybe, but every race would be your last, you just don't know, dear, what's going to happen with speedway and injuries and that. You know, I just don't like life one day that it comes, really. Um, you just never know, so I just, you just go out and enjoy it and do your best, and that's all you can do, isn't it? Right, and then going back to the last time um, the Panthers were up at Armadale, obviously it was quite a heavy defeat for the Panthers, but I think you, you would have to say that was down to just having absolutely no luck at all. Um, from memory, he's came up with a rider replacement already in and then lost both Jack Holder and Kenneth Hansen during the meeting. So obviously a few changes to the team since then as well. Do you feel better equipped to get a result this time? Well, I'd be surprised if we didn't score more points. <laughs> <laughs> you know, admittedly, we did have Bradley at reserve that night. I think he must have got nine or ten or more. He didn't. He was really good. But you know, you have to think Kenny Thompson isn't an Edinburgh fan. The track, um, and we've got rid of him and brought Chris in. Whereas I think I think he scored thirteen for Sheffield last week yesterday. Yeah. So that makes us stronger. Obviously, um, Jack will be there, um, and obviously, like you say, he withdrew. So hopefully he'll get the full meet, so we'll get more points out of him. Um, we haven't got Bradley, so if you've got maybe half of what he scored through, you've got a replacement. You know, you're already doing more. We've all been once. Tom Bacon has never been, but he's been now. So like me, he can score a few more. So there's no reason why we can't go and get a result. You know, it's, uh, Speedway's a funny sport. You know, I wouldn't have put Josh Bates down to get 13 or something at your place last week, but he did. So it, you know, it just shows people can do it, and obviously Edinburgh, I think you lost at home last week, didn't you? So, yeah. That's the first time I think I've lost at home in a while, isn't it? Yeah, first in the season, certainly, yep. Yeah, so, you know, it, it, these things happen, so you just got to, we're going, and like I say, we all want a big push, and um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to come and do our best, and uh, we definitely want to score more than we got last time, I'm sure, but obviously we're coming to win, we're, we're going to win everywhere, and then if we get a point or a draw or something, you know, one yeah. And then after the, the final piece in the team, um, you mentioned us kind of guess over the weekend, but it's Justin Sedgman that rides in place of Ulrich on Friday. So, you know, the other guy, well, kind of funny, one, you know, he's a track specialist know. there, and he's uh, had enough seasons there, so you know, I don't think Ulrich's a big fan of Edinburgh anyway. 
So whether I don't think his results are too fantastic there. So I like Sedgman will make it even stronger. So we'll with Sedgman, Holder and uh, uh, Harris and Chuck Starkey in the mix. You know, like potentially he's got sort of 40 points there. So if me and Tom can get sort of 6 to 11 between us, if you look at it that way, that's what all he Yep. So I beg one talk. Well, thanks very much for your time um, again, Simon, and uh, we'll see you on Friday. Uh, so some some forthright views from Simon there as always. Um, you know, Peterborough three weeks, uh, sorry, three matches this weekend. They're looking for some points to get them back into the playoff positions. They've got a fair bit to make up, uh, and they are a f team who sometimes are vulnerable at home as well. So. Uh, all sorts of things can still happen. I think Chris Harris, whilst he's doing very well, he does miss one or two matches from time to time because of his Royal House commitments. So it's all quite unpredictable. And all the teams in contention, including ourselves, just need to pick up as many points as we possibly can. I think you're right there, Mike. And what I would say to that is, you know, with, with no offence to Peterborough, if we ride to our potential, then I would hope that we would have enough in that lineup that would still see us through to the three points. I think it'll be close. But, you know, Ricky seems to have turned the corner a little bit. Um, Eric's been on form now for, for a couple of months. And th the main thing for me will be the likes of Max, Josh and Mitchell being able to pick up the points they, they should be getting against the likes of a Simon Lambert and a Tom Bacon at the bottom end. Definitely, that, that's where our problems lay last week. We didn't get enough points from the lower end of the side. Um, Plus, I suppose you could say that Ricky and, and Eric faded a little bit at the end, but they've, they've really got to do well. We're hoping that Ludwig Lindgren will do well as our guest. We know he'll give 100%, there's no doubts there. So, um, good points from everyone is what we're looking for. And Max Clegg scored one last week, so we're obviously looking for quite a bit more than that. Yeah, you mentioned our guest there, obviously, we brought um, Ludwig Lindgren back in. Um, you know, I don't think anyone will really forget his guest appearance for us last season. Um, you're sort of the, the club historian. Has anyone ever scored a, a double maximum as a guest for the Monarchs before Woodvig uh, last year? No, I don't think so. <laughs> and then even, you know, it, it wasn't a flash in the pan this year. You know, he was very impressive in the Scottish Open. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but from memory, was it 12 points he scored when Newcastle were up the other week? Um, I think it was about that. Yeah. And, that, and that's, yeah. you know, and as Alex Harkis has always said in the past, you know, these kind of points come when riding against the likes of Masters, rest Wells on their own track. You know, when you're riding with them, it, it can become a slightly easier proposition. Yes, indeed. Uh, we've got high hopes of Ludwig. And looking at the, the rest of the team, obviously it lines up kind of as per normal. Um, one man who you, you would definitely say probably did his job last week, um, as a man we're going to speak to now, uh, Theo Piper. Theo, I think, was paid for six or paid for seven um, last week in, in our defeat. Um, and we caught up with Theo this afternoon as well. So we're now joined on the Monarchs preview show by uh, Monarchs number two, Theo Piper. How are you, Theo? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much for joining us. So just maybe starting off looking back at last Friday, um, just how disappointing a result was that for the team? Uh, well, I, I think a, a really d disappointing, you know. Um, I think for all, you know, we lost uh, we lost one of our, our main men. Um, and also, I think um, we didn't expect that to happen, really. You know, um, and of course that's disappointing. But um, I think we just need to put our heads together for uh, for for Friday coming, and then uh, you need to you need to yeah pull them points back really. And I mean, have you spoken to any of the team this week? How was the mood in the camp after after the defeat and the loss of Sam? Yeah, well, we I, I spoke um, to the riders who were at Peterborough, and um, after that we were we were all disappointed, of course, because. Uh, I had a disappointed first race because one of my ignition cables was loose, and then, you know, um, well, mechanical failures you can't you can't uh, you can't come by really if if you're in a in a in a meeting like that really. So, but um, yeah, I, I think uh, the boys are are um, I think on Friday we'll 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 be hugging together really, you know, to uh, to see if we can get the full maximum points. And so I take it then that there is still a belief that the team will still make the playoffs, and that's still the goal towards the end of the season. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, um, I'm I'm trying my hardest to find out why why I, I'm I'm struggling a little bit. Uh, 
and I know everybody says, oh, yeah, but, you know, you're, you're coming in late and, and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I used to ride Armadale as one of the best, so um, I want to go back to that. And you mentioned that there, you're, obviously, you're, you're trying to work out. Is there anything you can put in your arm? Do you think there's, there's just something there mechanically that's stopping that just now? Well, I changed frames um, last year um, to ride on, on bigger tracks because I was, I was uh, of course, on a different team. And uh, and uh, I kind of, yeah, feel like I'm I'm not... 100% comfortable on the bike sitting how um, how I used to sit on the bike so we made we made some changes uh, this week and then hopefully um, last Friday we made a little change on it and it got a little bit better and um, hopefully this week uh, it will be even even better again and that's it. obviously another another big weekend um, we've yeah. got a, a strong looking Panthers team coming up obviously Chris Harris we all know how good he was last week yeah Jack Holder you know probably one of the brightest young stars in the sport. Yeah, you know, it's going to be another tough, another tough battle for the Monarchs on Friday. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I think uh, you know the youngsters uh, don't, don't, don't. Yeah, they they have no fear really. Um, they they're fast and they're they're a bit crazy sometimes. But uh, yeah, I think it's it's all in the game now. You know, um, we we also uh, we we made changes to the engines and stuff. Um, hopefully to make it better because um, I had three engines and we made them all uh, when we were in Europe. Uh, we changed them all over to. To hopefully to suit the smaller track, so uh, so hopefully um, this Friday we we can uh, we can show that. And obviously it'll be a slightly different for yourself in Heat One. Um, we know Sam there going up next to to Ludwig who steps in to get for Sam. Is he someone you've ridden with before? Yeah, well Ludwig, uh, I, I can speak good with him all the time. Uh, you know we have always a good laugh, and uh, yeah, I guessed it a few times for Newcastle and uh, rode with him and. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, he, he's he's a good rider to be with. He he'll look out for you and uh, and try to help you as well, you know. And then obviously after Friday we move on to Glasgow on Saturday. Um, a lot of friends through there for yourself as a former league winning Tiger. Is that one yeah. you're looking forward to as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, I like the track. Um, you know, uh, I just need to you know push myself a bit more to the limit now and uh, yeah, get some more points on the board for the team. That will be a tough one though. You know, if the Glasgow have been pretty much invincible at home so far. You know, are the boys going through there even for a point, or you know, what's the kind of mindset as you go into a match like that? Yeah, I think it's just another match, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter if, if it's the one at the bottom or the one at the top, you know. Uh, I think um, you need to go there with a with a name to win. And um, I, I, I believe that the team can do that. Perfect. Well, thank you once again for your time this evening, Theo, and I'll see you on Friday. No problem, thank you. So thank you very much for Theo for taking the time out to talk to us. So that's the two lineups f- for this Friday, Mike. Obviously, the home matches are the sort of the most important for us now. We still probably need a couple of away points to get ourselves guaranteed the playoffs, but we can't definitely can't afford to drop any more home points now. Definitely not. We're we're saying already that this Friday will be still a tough one. We've got Ipswich the week after, and then Glasgow still to come. So it's not going to be easy. That's true, yeah. It's uh, one of the, I guess, the variances of the fixture list this season. We're racing everyone twice. We, we seem to have sort of hit four of the, the toughest challenges, maybe, in the space of a four-match spell. You know, give or take the uh, the Caledonian Riders Championship and the rearranged boxing fixture was announced today. Um, obviously, after Friday, we moved to Glasgow on Saturday. I guess, you know, it, it's a derby. We're, we're never going to play it down. But the way this season's been going for Glasgow at home... You know, if we can come out with that with anything, it's a bonus point. It's not somewhere we're targeting any points for. I wouldn't think so. We we got 34 last time we were there when we were going quite well at the start of the season. And we'll go with a weaker team this time. So it would be uh, pretty surprising if we push them close. And uh, I just hope we, we can put up a reasonable show. So going back to, to Friday night and, and Peter Barrera visitors, so we're now going to do our usual um, blast from the past, so two two excellent races from the archives here. Um, Peter Barrera has been an inconsistent visitor over the years with their elite league commitments, um, so it's always interesting to see some of the rides from the past from them. Collins lifting wildly from the outside and it's 
Johnson and Sullivan leading the way. Anderson's in third. Here comes Collins round the outside. Anderson momentarily passed Johnson there. There's Collins trying to find room round the outside and there doesn't seem to be much. So the 5-1 here could change the picture dramatically. Although Collins is looking threatening. Two laps gone and he's the man now on the Panther's tail. He switched to the inside. Not quite there though. On Johnson. He's through into second now I think. Terrific riding there by Collins. What can he do about Sullivan? Probably not got enough time to catch him or has he? Here comes Collins for a blast round the outside. He's not going to get there though. Sullivan moved wide and took the victory. Well, it was the first bend that cost Les Collins dear there. He just didn't have enough time to catch Sullivan. Number eight then and Peter Brick guest Alec Egbert goes off gate number one. Of course, he's got two on the trot here. Gate number two in blue is Derek Snedden. Gate number three in white, Adam Ronan. And on the outside, Justin Sedgman in the red helmet colour. The Monarchs now 71 64 ahead in this League Cup final. Let's see what they can do here. Can they increase their advantage or can they get themselves further back into this meeting? And Derek Snedden's made a phenomenal start out of gate number two. Can teammate Justin Sedgman come round the outside and join them at the front? He can. And as they push past the Peter Brapier, can Snedden hold on to that second place? But Edbert comes up the inside to try and make a race of it. But Snedden's determined in that outside. Can he hold on? As he looks to right, the wall of death is out there. And the dirt and the drive as Edbert comes up the inside. Can Snedden get back right now outside of him? He looks comfortable. He looks on the pace. That's a great ride by Snedden. As he gets round Edberg, fantastic ride by the Monarchs captain. Leading by example. Showing the boys how to do it. Out of the dirt. Brilliant ride by Snedden. Then, as it looks to secure another 5 1 for the Monarchs, but Edbert's not finished yet. As he goes back up the inside of Snedden, can Snedden get back in the dirt here to take past the Swede one more time? He lifts coming out of gate two and he gets himself in all sorts of bother. Can Pat Roynan now get past Snedden? Can he hang on? He takes out Roynan and Snedden's ended up in all sorts of trouble there. He ended up in the high side. He hit the fence coming out of, of Ben 3, got himself into trouble in the back straight. Then he he didn't fix it, he didn't get in the right position, got into turns three and four and ended up in all sorts of mess and ended up over the top and hitting Adam Roynan. Good to see Adam getting up, he's had his fair share of injury problems but Captain Snedden's still down injured, that's got to be a worry, that looked a nasty one for Snedden. So Mike, that's, that's pretty much us for this week, um, so obviously two big matches ahead, tickets are still available um, and available at a discounted rate through the Monarchs website until midnight on Thursday night. Um, you know the weather seems to be set fair. We've got a cracking visiting side coming ahead. Um, looks all set to be another another interesting tussle on Friday night. I certainly hope so, and I hope uh, our friend Scott Frame will be back with the shows next week as well. That's it. We'll we'll have our Friday focus after the match on Friday as always, um, and then we'll be back hopefully back to normal with the preview show um, back up to its full video format next week. So thanks again for your time tonight, Mike. Thank you. Thank you.